Hello, my name is Marjorie Grace, and I'm running for City Council to represent Ward 3. I was born and raised in Gloucester. My husband, Greg, and I raised our daughter, Alexandra, here. I'm a surgical technologist employed by Leahy. My husband works for an established local business, and my daughter is a local small business owner. I have lived most of my life in Gloucester, with the exception of 10 years I spent in Quincy. It was those 10 years living in a very busy and densely populated city that made me really appreciate our peaceful island home. Today, our city is divided. This has resulted in a lot of heated exchanges, particularly on social media. Rather than finding common ground, ugly words and personal attacks, attacks have prevailed and respect is an afterthought. Respect is vital and whether one has been here for a year or a generation, we must work together to protect these shores and usher in a future that is inclusive, equitable and sustainable. I'm running for Ward 3 because Ward 3 needs someone to help navigate the coming years with a sense of fairness and a willingness to work toward common goals. Someone who will listen to the residents' concerns and represent them with integrity when important decisions are being made. Two of the biggest issues facing Gloucester at this time are the lack of affordable housing and overdevelopment. There is a disconnect by the people who are making decisions for Gloucester regarding development, particularly in Ward 3 and our neighboring Ward 2. The MBT housing mandate has the potential to inundate the area surrounding the train station with significant development. The magnitude of the proposed development is daunting and in an already densely populated area, it is unrealistic to focus solely on one area. Compromise is necessary and a more equitable way of approaching the issue is paramount. We simply do not have the resources, infrastructure or land to accommodate a massive increase of housing in the area a half a mile around the depot. It is the people who live in this area who will be unduly impacted by the congestion, traffic, pollution, accidents, noise, and loss of identity. I look around at the narrow 400-year-old streets that intertwine the inner, inner city and I think to myself, how much more can you put on in these neighborhoods? One-way streets, bottlenecks from parked cars, ever-increasing traffic, and shrinking open space. At what point do we say enough? It is absolutely necessary to explore less developed areas. With careful planning and with respect for the land and the residents, it is possible to build without destroying a landscape while maintaining green space, something Ward 3 does not have. With increased development and the subsequent increase in population, there are real issues that must not be overlooked in the grand scheme. For example, how will the fire department and the police department deal with increased congestion downtown when there is an emergency? Will we need more first responders to adequately ensure public safety? How will this affect the ability of Addison Gilbert Hospital to provide emergency and non-emergency services? How will resources and infrastructure like water and electricity be addressed? How will we protect the waterfront from overdevelopment? These are real questions that require real answers. The mandate will create much needed housing, but it will not address the affordability factor. And for that very reason, it will not ensure that people who wish to remain here, raise families and live here beyond retirement will be able to do so. Theory and reality are not mirrors. Change is an unavoidable part of life. How change unfolds on our shores is what will determine Gloucester's future. I can help navigate that tricky path for, for Ward 3 and be a voice for positive change that is considerate, inclusive, and thoughtful to all people and all generations. Gloucester is at a crossroads right now. And we must have decision makers who are thoughtful and progressive, but also sensitive to the generations that have called our city home for a very long time. We must find common ground with the old and the new, or the only people who will benefit from unavoidable change will be the developers. On November 7th, we collectively choose the team who will guide the city at a crucial point in time. It's up to you, the voters, to decide who will best represent you with the respect and integrity you and our city deserve. Hi, my name's Mary Paterosa. I bought my home in Lanesville about 15 years ago, and since then I enjoy my time at the Cove, exploring Dogtown, the quarries, and walking the trails with my dog. 
I'm running for Ward 4 Councilor because I want to strengthen our city government so that it's more responsive to residents' needs. I'm a retired IT project manager and I've worked for Fortune 100 and 500 companies managing multi-million dollar projects, contracts, and teams. Currently, I'm working as a property manager for the senior and low-income populations. I will use my professional management skills to ensure budgets, proposals, projects, resources, and communications meet predetermined community needs and goals set by residents. As part of this solution, I will also make every effort to hold monthly in-person Ward 4 meetings to discuss all city business with you, then gather your feedback on issues and use that information for my voting responsibilities. As Ward 4 Counselor, I will represent your interest, not mine, during city meetings because this is how I believe the job should be done. The proposed affordable housing solution is a regional state administered program that aligns Gloucester home and apartment prices with Boston Cambridge home and apartment prices. This model does not work for our local population as seen by the Gloucester Crossing apartment prices where a one bedroom is listed today for $2,450. As Ward 4 Counselor, I will work with the Mayor and the City Council to explore a locally administered and controlled housing model that better serves our local residential communities. Many Ward 4 residents are rightfully concerned about city spending and taxes. As a project manager with budget experience, I will scrutinize budgets and contract expenditures and streamline them where practical. Just like residents manage their own housing budgets to live within their means, the city must do the same. The proposed wastewater treatment plant is a pending financial tidal wave with a proposed cost of $150 million or more. This cost will be spread out over the entire real estate tax base and not just those residents with sewers. We know we need it, we know it's federally mandated, but the issue is how will the additional tax burden impact our local community? My fear is I'll see more of my neighbors forced to sell their family homes and leave the island because of the additional cost. So I'll work with the mayor and the city council to identify possible financial solutions to minimize the burden on residents. If my message resonates with you, then I'm asking you to please vote for me, Mary Patrosa, for Ward 4 Counselor on November 7th, because I want to be your voice. If you have any questions or might be interested in volunteering for my campaign, I can be reached at Ward 4 DeRosa at Gmail. That's Ward, the number four, DeRosa at gmail.com. Thank you so much. My name is Frank Mojota, and I am running to be your next Ward 4 City Councilor. I stand before you today, not just as your current City Councilor for Ward 3, but as a proud member of this incredible community that I call home. My connection to Gloucester runs deep. Born and raised right here, I am a first-generation Sicilian, the proud son of a fisherman who taught us the values of hard work, resilience, dedication, and love for our coastal town. I am also a proud alum of Gloucester High School, where I first discovered the sense of friendship, in unity that defines our city. My wife and I, seven years ago, we made the decision to move home to Gloucester, not just to be close to our family and loved ones, but also for the promise of nurturing community to help raise our kids. A decision driven by our shared love for this community and desire to contribute to its growth. We are raising three beautiful kids with one currently in Gloucester Public Schools. For the past two years, I have had the privilege of serving as your city councilor for Ward 3. It's been an honor to work with you, listen to your concerns, and advocate for the prosperity of our current city. In Gloucester, we are not just residents, we are a family, a community that supports each other through thick and thin. I carry this sentiment with me in every decision I make as your city councilor. I am committed to preserving the essence of our town, ensuring that it remains a place where families can thrive and where the ties that bind us grow stronger with each passing day. 
Now that you know a little bit more about my background, let's talk about the future, the backbone of our community, our schools. A city's strength lies in the education it provides us to its youth. As your city councilor, I'm dedicated to ensuring that our schools are not only strong, but also supported. This means etiquette funding, modern resources, and and teachers who are not just educators, but mentors shaping the minds of our future leaders. Together, we can create an environment where every child thrives, unlocking their full potential. Now let's shift focus to our roads and infrastructure. Safe roads are not just a matter of convenience. They are a matter of life and death. I'm committed to working tirelessly to improve our roads, making them safer to our families and more effective for our businesses. As we build a city that moves seamlessly, let's not forget about our green parks and waterways. Access to green space is not just a luxury, it is a necessity for a health and happy community. I will continue to advocate for the preservation and expansions of our parks, ensuring that our children and families have safe places to play and enjoy for future generations. Lastly, but certainly not least, I advocate for small business owners. They are the heartbeat of our community, providing jobs, fostering innovation, and shaping our city's unique identity. Let's create an environment where local businesses not only survive, but thrive, contributing to the prosperity of us all. I love Gloucester, not just for its scenic views or its rich history, but for the people that make it truly special. You, my neighbors, my friends. Together, let's continue to build on the 400-year-old legacy of our city, creating a future that reflects the values we hold dear. In conclusion, I'm not just a candidate. I am your neighbor, your partner in progress, and your advocate for change. I truly believe your voice matters. I am committed to amplifying your voice, valuing your opinions, and respectfully representing the constituents of Ward 4. So on November 7th, vote Frank, because your voice matters. Thank you for your continued faith in me. I look forward to working alongside you to make Gloucester an even better place for generations to come. Thank you.